I'm Anne Marie Mahoney, and this is Belmont Journal. My guest today is Dana Bickelman, the brand new director of the Beach Street Center. Dana, welcome. Thank you. I'm very happy to have this opportunity for us to chat. I've been working and, and uh, availing myself of the programs at the Beach Street Center, so I'm thrilled to have you here, give you an opportunity to talk about yourself and your ideas for the center now that you are the new director. <laughs> so why don't we start out with, tell us a little bit about your background, education, early jobs. Sure. Um, so I grew up in Sherburn um, and went to Dover Sherburn High School. Um, and I received my um, BS from Fishburg State University um, in Human Services. Uh, I thought I wanted to be a special education teacher uh, and then transitioned um, into more human services and direct care. Uh, that, I think, came from my mom, who used to work uh, as far in DDS. Um, so that was kind of how I started my career. Um, and then I also received my master's in public administration from Suffolk University. Oh, um, and my first job was scooping gelato at Lookout Farm. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was an interesting first job. Well, I'll bet. Yeah. But you got to know people. Yes. <laughs> Serving people, that's important. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, excellent. So then what ultimately got you interested in working with seniors? Sure. Um, so it happened kind of by accident as I was um, going through my master's program at Suffolk. Um, one of our projects that we had to do um, was looking at a, a program from kind of the start to finish. You're looking at the, um, you know, your outputs, your um, inputs, your outcomes, and how that looks. And so um, I worked with Bay Path Elder Services, um, and they have now merged. There are um, ASAP. They just merged with Springwell. Um, okay. So now they're kind of making a bigger, even more services. Um, so that was kind of how it started, and I learned more about elder services, and I was like, I think I really want to do this. Um, so it, it really just happened by accident. Um, and I got more involved, got a job as a case manager at uh, Bay Path, and was working with some of the more complex cases, um, some more hoarding, um, mental health uh, cases like that, uh, and started to learn more about senior centers and councils on aging. Um, and then figured out that there would be a way to morph local government municipality with a senior center with elders, and that's how it sort of just happened. Um, and I had uh, another job at the Marlboro Council on Aging as the outreach coordinator over there, um, and then moved to Belmont as the assistant director. All right, so, yeah. excellent, very good. Yeah. And for our audience, tell us a little bit more about Springwell, sure. because they are such an awesome resource, but many people don't know anything about them and why sure. we partner with them at the Senior Center. Sure. Um, so uh, they're an aging service access point. Um, there are um, 27, I believe, throughout uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, um, and they did just merge with um, Bay Path, and they have a wide variety of services. Um, so they help provide in-home services and connecting with home care agencies, um, and that could just be a little bit of help, whether you just need a little homemaking, someone to help with laundry, someone to help with grocery shopping, um, a companion, someone to just spend a few hours with you, um, and some more complex as far as um, personal care, home health aid. Um, they help uh, provide resources as far as like medication management. Um, and nice. if you ever needed like the lifeline button, um, they help as far as transitions, uh, discharge planning if you were coming out of the hospital um, and any sort of supports that you may need. Um, they help as far uh, as meals. So they provide the home delivered meals. Um, so if you needed a meal delivered to your home, you could have that. Um, they provide uh, geriatric care support, uh, ombudsman and uh, long-term planning. Um, they help with um, SHINE, which is serving the health insurance needs of everyone. I think they might have updated that acronym. Um, which is uh, health insurance information. Um, they do um, money management. So if someone needed help with you know, balancing their checkbook or writing checks, they help with those kinds of things. Um, they offer a variety of supports. So. All right, excellent. Yeah. Jumping off of that for a little bit, um, you mentioned the meals. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about the meal program that is available at sure. the B Street Center. Sure. Um, so we have uh, lunch. We serve it five days a week. Um, and we have it as an option, uh, and we were doing it throughout the pandemic too. Um, when we were shut down, um, we had it as a grab and go option so people could still come and pick up lunch. Um, a lot of people still like to stay. Um, and when the weather was nice, they were out there, and even when it turned colder, uh, and we bought heaters so people could stay oh, wow, outside, good. and they loved it. Um, people loved it. Uh, but now that we've opened our doors back up, um, we are serving lunches in-house as well, so 
people still have the option of taking it home if they want to, um, or they can heat it up and eat it um, at the center. We are really trying to pick back up our numbers because I think it wasn't just about the meal, it was really about the social aspect of it. Exactly. Um, so we would love to get our numbers back up. Um, and it's one of the most important meals of the day too. Um, they're, they're big, so you could eat a little bit of it and take some of it home or um, however you wanted to do it. Um, but it's, it's really helpful, I think, in providing that. Um, and I think with difficult times, you know, thinking about um, economic and food insecurity, nice. how expensive food is. Um, this is a voluntary $2 donation um, and n no one would ever be turned away. Um, so I, I, I really hope that people start to utilize uh, the lunch as more than just a meal. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a wonderful program. Healthy meals at a very reasonable yeah. cost and the socialization. So I'm glad that people have been able mm -hmm. to come back in mm -hmm. and socialize. That's excellent. All right, now getting back to <laughs> you're the new director. Um, how has being the director instead of the assistant director been different for you? Sure. Um, so it's very different because as assistant director, I was in charge of the newsletter and the programs um, and got to really immerse myself into those, which I, I love because I love people. Um, and there's something to be uh, said about being the director where you sort of have to have a different hands-off kind of approach and you're doing, you're focused more on, you know, interpersonal and things going on with, you know, between staff and relationships there. Um, you're thinking about the budget, you're thinking about managing the building. Um, there's a lot more things that I have to learn that I wasn't really involved with before. Um, I think the budget is going to be the trickiest part. <laughs> um, no one, I don't think, gives you, you know, there's no book or there's no formula to really follow. <laughs> no. um, and I think everyone sort of struggles with that. So um, that has been interesting, but I think something that I'm still, no matter what my role is, I'm going to still, I think, find myself being at the programs and being a part of the programs um, because that's that's really what I love. So um, while our roles were different, um, I can sort of appreciate now, now that we're looking for a new assistant director, sort of how to merge that together um, so that you, you really are learning not just the programs and not just what, you know, goes into running this center, but more of the, the town side and more of the budget and, and more things like that. So... Yeah. All right. Good. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. You know, and how you meld with the other town departments. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you're right. on a par with those other department right. heads and have the opportunity, I would suspect, mm -hmm. to work well with them, mm -hmm. public safety mm -hmm. and, and health department, whatever. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. good. I bet that's exciting. Yeah. Um, what do you enjoy most about the Belmont Senior Center? I love Belmont. I really love, I think, what I love the most, and I was saying yesterday, I, I really like the small town feel. Um, I think you have better opportunity to see your direct input versus maybe a larger community where you can't see what you're doing. Um, you remember people's faces, you remember their names. I really love that neighborhood sense. Um, and I think I really love also uh, advocating and support. Um, it's not just you know one person, it's a whole community advocating for a, a need or something that that they want. Um, I really love that that feeling of it. Um, the neighborhood close knit uh, support system that you get within Belmont. So, Excellent. and I think we have this unique uh, group of of seniors and group of you know retired MIT Harvard professors, people who worked for NASA. Um, we have another member who used to work with Julia Child. Oh, I mean, wow. like we just have this like really, really, really neat array of people um, that come from various backgrounds, languages. Um, D different nationalities. I just, I love, I love how diverse we are. So, um, and the people that we're bringing in and where we're coming from. So I, I really love Belmont. Um, talk a little bit about some of the programs that are in place and thankfully are coming back sure. because now we're in person and um, even some of the people you bring in because you do bring in sure. really excellent speakers and presenters and, sure. and programs. Sure, sure. Um, so we really tried when we opened our doors to have everything that we had before we closed and have that back. Um, it was hard, some teachers were obviously not comfortable coming back, um, so how do you adapt? Can you do something hybrid? Um, and we were really lucky, um, thanks to Jeff and the Belmont Media Center, to have that technology where we can offer hybrid. Um, and our media coordinator, Rich, is amazing, and uh, he knows all of the ins and outs with doing that. So um, 
a lot of our programs we can thankfully offer in a hybrid fashion. So if people want to come, they can do it. If not, if they want to do it from home, they have that option as well. Um, people love the um, language classes, informal groups. Um, we'd love to really pick that back up to um, people playing chess or more card games, um, things like that. Uh, we're always looking to get our numbers back up for bingo and for other, you know, our fitness classes, um, things like things like that. Um, we have all of our programs. It's really just getting people back in uh, is, sure. is the important part. So, Tell us a little more about the fitness programs. Sure. Because I think they're pretty popular yeah. for a wide age mm -hmm. spread. Spread, yep. Um, we have a variety of fitness classes. So we've got um, three strength and flex classes. We've got a core class. We've got um, two varieties of yoga, um, chair and uh, floor yoga. Um, we have a power of posture class. Um, we just started a low impact aerobics and Pilates um, where we've got a variety of classes that, that people can try. Um, and then our fitness room is very popular. Um, people love the fitness room. So that's $10 a month for Belmont residents, 15 for non-Belmont residents. Uh, I think people are always looking for, for fitness and how to stay active. Um, and how, you know, we thought about doing, we wanna resume our walking group and, and outdoor things outside too. Right. Um, and people just really love the fitness classes. So the more that we can offer, the better. Um, there's lots of different classes that we haven't tried and, and if people are interested in that, we would do it. Um, so we, our fitness classes are great. Yeah, excellent, yeah. excellent. How about something a, a little quieter and more sedate? Sure. I think you used to have some meditation classes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was offered in the evenings, um, four o'clock on Tuesdays. Um, but since we have not reopened back in the evening, um, when we do need a new um, meditation instructor too, but that would be something I think, especially during the pandemic, thinking right. about um, having something to help people kind of reduce that anxiety and stress um, and lots of mindfulness and meditation programs. Um, so that is something that we're constantly thinking of as well is, is how to help, you know, not just your body, but your mind and kind of this all, all encompassing um, to be able to help people. So excellent. Yeah. Um, prior to the pandemic, you also sponsored some, what sounded like, as I read in the newsletter, really fun stuff, um, going out to restaurants, mm -hmm traveling, mm -hmm. day trips, mm -hmm. even uh, weekend trips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you going to be getting back into those kinds of activities? Yeah, yeah. So we have our supper club. Um, we do that once a month. Uh, people love it. They go out to dinner. Um, I, it's. I thought that I had gone gone through all the restaurants in the area. <laughs> um, so I'm always looking for new restaurant suggestions. Um, people love it. I again, I don't think it's really about the food. Um, although we have some some people who really do love the food and appreciate it. Um, but I think again, it's really just that experience of going out to dinner with people. Um, and our friends, friends of the Belmont Council on Aging, they have been so uh, kind in providing the funding for us to be able to offer weekend trips. Um, if we wanted to do something like that, uh, our veterans group, um, they did a weekend trip um, back in the summer, I believe. Um, there's something that we're planning, um, the Mystic Corral in Lexington, that'll be right. an evening program. Um, that's December 8th, uh, which is a Thursday night. Um, so more people, I think, would like to be able to do these weekend trips, um, the BSO, or I just learned that I didn't realize there was an orchestra um, in Concord, uh, yes, which yes. is a little bit closer and yes. a, a little, maybe a little bit less expensive, so um, yes. people can still get that experience. Um, so we're working on, on more weekend, uh, evening kinds of things, because I think people really like that you know, continuing that, the day. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and I think there actually is a Belmont connection to that ah. Concord Orchestra, our former Fine and Performing Arts director used to also be oh. the conductor of that orchestra for a number of years. So that's probably oh, how people yeah. got involved with that. It is wonderful. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Super. All right. Um, uh, what do you see as the challenges for the center? We've, we've mentioned COVID, sure. we've mentioned a, a few other things, funding, for mm -hmm. example. What are some of the challenges that you see now that you're in a role to really see the big picture? Sure, sure. So I think, again, it's getting people back, getting people comfortable to come back. Um, and then what are they looking for as far as us as the center of, of services that we can provide? Um, I don't think, you know, we're not just a place for people to come and sit and, you know, play bingo. We, we're more than that. So I think it's really um, marketing ourselves to let people know these are the services that we offer and, you know, not to shy away and feel, you know, any sort of shame in, in reaching out and saying, maybe I'm struggling a little bit and I might need fuel assistance or I might need an extra, you know, 
Good. some support as far as a, a meal or, or something that we can provide. Um, our social worker, Janet Amder, amazing, um, and a wealth of information if people wanted to come forward and needed something. Um, but I think that's a challenge that all senior centers are facing is, is getting people to come back. Um, the other thing, too, that we're always concerned about um, is people being able to afford to stay in this community. I, yeah, that's, that's huge. Yeah, it's, it's huge for a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah, but if you know, there's not enough uh, affordable housing. How can our right. seniors stay? Um, and are people, you know, feeling potentially forced out and they can't, um, they can't afford to stay? So what do we need to do to sort of um, help help balance that? Um, and then I think there's also the people that we're missing, the people who are isolated and at home that we're missing. How do we make those connections? Um, so I think there's a lot of barriers and things that that we could be doing more of as far as our outreach and how we get out there. Um, so we just kind of have to get creative and, and look at how we do that. So, Yeah, I think that's really important because I think in this economy, and I know as a senior citizen, you know, your circumstances can change very quickly right. and unexpectedly. And it, it is difficult to navigate all of the, the sort of bureaucracy out there to right. get help. Right. What would be the most direct way for seniors who are looking for some support or some help to get in touch with sure, sure. you, the center, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so if they call the front desk, um, our phone number is 617-993-2970, um, and they can ask for myself, um, or they can ask for our social worker, Janet Amder. Um, her phone number is 617-993-2983, um, and she is there. You can call her anytime or leave her a voicemail or myself, um, and we're happy to put people in, in touch with um, services or things that they may need, uh, or, or at least try. We may not have the answer, but we will try, um, and we'll, we'll search for it. We'll look for it together. Um, it's, it's worth asking. So, And if they have ideas on things that we can do, um, or other places that we can connect with. We're always looking for more resources, resources too. Um, Belmont Helps we've turned to um, okay, as far good. as they've been uh, wonderful as if people needed help getting groceries or if they needed some money to be able to help because they just didn't have enough to cover. Um, and so Belmont Helps came through as far as providing gift cards for Star Market and for um, restaurants that were close to their house. Um, we're trying to um, get our volunteers up as far as snow shoveling, leaf raking, things like that, services that people will need. Um, fuel assistance, as I mentioned, now the season has, has started, so yes. I know people are calling. Um, and we're trying to do more programs um, to give people the information ahead of time so they can try to make, you know, plan so we're having more programs. Not be in a crisis. Right, right. Um, so Belmont uh, Light is coming to give oh, uh, a talk on, you know, what the what the new rates will be, how that will impact people. Um, we want to have more financial literacy programs and really give people the tools to be able to sort of manage their money. Um, it may not be, you know, just like in their bank account, but really trying to figure out, you know, lifelong savings or if they feel like maybe they don't have money to manage, you know, how do you kind of long-term plan for things? Um, I think the better that we can do in the, and things that we can provide to get people to stay in Belmont, the, the better, you know, our chances will be that they, that they can. Um, and we don't want people to leave. So. We don't because for people, but again, particularly senior citizens, it's so important to have the familiar neighborhood yeah. The, the familiar surroundings to be able to easily get to the doctor, the dentist, the, the services that they're used to mm -hmm. having. Um, it, it's very uprooting to have a senior be forced right. to live elsewhere and, and in a way start all over again. Right. It's, it's extremely disruptive and, and emotionally mm -hmm. draining for them. Mm -hmm. So all of this sounds absolutely wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Um, let's, you mentioned uh, Janet, talk a little bit about social worker, mm -hmm. Um, what kind of services are offered there and sure. why it's so important. Last budget season, I know town meeting and, and in the town, we talked a lot about the need for a social sure. worker. Sure. And many people didn't know. They said, well, who cares? Why does the senior center need a social worker? Yeah. So tell us a little bit why that's so important. Yeah, yeah. I think that the need and the, the pandemic and, and challenges that we've gone through, I think people really need that support. Um, looking for, um, you know, a social worker and someone to talk to, or maybe they're having interpersonal things at home that they don't know how to deal with. Um, you know, are they being financially exploited? Is there some sort of, you know, um, elder abuse or things that we don't know about? Um, it could be sort of transitions, you know, I'm, I have, um, I need to be selling my home, so what am I going to do next? Or um, it could be hoarding and certain mental health issues that we don't know about, um, and they, you know, we could get a phone call from the Board of Health, and then we have to go 
in and figure out what are the next steps um, and how do we help that. Janet um, helps fa uh, facilitate our decluttering group um, and our buried in treasures and, and support group with that. Um, we've got art therapy. We have a, an art therapy oh, intern yes. from Leslie College, so oh, that's excellent. really great. That's super. Yeah, um, you can really look at the need in, in kind of in any direction. Um, and you don't want to burden, you know, police and fire. And they, those services that maybe people are calling and, and overutilizing um, don't have to be overutilized if we have this, you know, we have the social worker in place to be able to sort of meet those needs. Um, it sort of helps everybody. Um, so uh, the social worker is a, is a critical piece uh, for the center and for, for the needs of the community. So. Um, and that was going to be one of my questions. How do you partner with police, fire, health, mm -hmm. and these other departments in town to better serve seniors? Sure. Um, so the uh, Belmont uh, Health Department was incredibly helpful for during the pandemic, um, helping people uh, register and get them signed up uh, when we did the clinic with the Arlington, uh, right, town of Arlington right. at the high school, um, transportation and getting people there, um, getting them signed up. It was just amazing. Um, and we continue to offer clinics with them. If, if they're not doing it at Temple Bethel, um, then we hit the space to be able to, to get people signed up and get them vaccinated. Um, great too, when they have tests that we can distribute out to people, um, mask, the board of health has just been great, um, about helping seniors get vaccinated because you know, when they first rolled everything out, it was, it was difficult. It was hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for, uh, yeah. for everybody. Um, it was. so for, for the town to be able to do something for the board of health and for us to be able to do that, um, that was great. So we love partnering with the, with the board of health. Um, we also love partnering with, uh, fire and police because they do a lot of safety, um, programs, public safety, uh, holidays are coming up. So I think, you know, scams, um, Price. yeah. And, and, uh, keeping people aware of the scams that are going on, um, whether it's, you know, kind of the ones that always happen, you know, trying to get people to um, pay for them to do, you know, repairs or chimney or things like that, right. and they just go door to door, um, and you're not sure that it's a scam. Um, so having the police and, f and fire involved is great. Um, we've been doing a lot of things with the fire uh, as far as they just came and did a first aid, CPR, oh, uh, things like that, um, which is great. So we're always partnering with them and we're always looking for new ways to partner with them. But they, they really love, they love coming to the center and we love when they come to the center. So Excellent, very are. good. Um, what about, we, I mentioned this and then I didn't follow up on it, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, the outside speakers and programs that mm -hmm. you bring in, mm -hmm. Um, hopefully that's opening up mm -hmm. a little bit n more now that sure. we're, we're getting past COVID, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, what are some of those programs that stand out in your mind as being very successful or um, uh, that bring in a lot of people? Sure. Um, so as we were leaving today, we had uh, the flashback band of Marlboro. Um, they were there. People yes, I heard them music. as I was leaving. <laughs> yes, they were people good. People love music. Um, we've had some great um, one, one person show. We did an RBG. Um, we had another person, Stephen Collins, he did, um, I think it was, oh, he did Herman, Herman Melville maybe, or he did uh, Walt Whitman, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, he's coming back to do another one. People love these kind of historical, uh, you know, one person shows. Uh, they, they love that kind of stuff. Um, we, you know, movies people really love just as, you know, to relax and, and just enjoy a, a movie if you don't feel like going to the movie theater. Um, they love when we do um, kind of you know, these, these special, uh, events that we do with maybe the Belmont Media Center, like what is a QR code or things with the library, oh, Can, you know, um, anything related to history books that usually draws a lot of people, um, music, we're trying to up our, you know, intergenerational programs and things like that. Um, so our special event and anything with food too, um, people right. will, <laughs> yes, people, people want their food. Will, yeah, people will come if there's food involved. So yeah, the, our special events, um, have not have not changed or, or lost their their luster. People still really like them. So, really? yeah. all right, yeah. good. Um, what about services specifically for seniors? We've talked about the lunches. Mm -hmm. You also have the Belder Bus, mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm familiar with the Belder Bus through my capital budget work. Sure. Um, Nava did a great job of outreach, getting grants for that. Yeah. So we've got a brand new Belder Bus. Mm -hmm. How does that work? People uh, can call when they need a ride. They can call our transportation coordinator, Marty Clarity. Um, he's wonderful. His phone number is 617-993-2989. Um, um, if they need a ride, um, it's great. It's not just for you know Mount Auburn Hospital or if they have a doctor's appointment around the community, um, but to get their hair done or if they're going oh, out to lunch, yeah, or to get to and from the senior center. Um, our transportation department is is great, and I think you're seeing 
um, uptick in, in numbers and, and people wanting to go, you know, now they're comfortable uh, going out again and going to see their doctor, um, but we still face the issue of, you know, we can't get people to Mass INR or to Mass General or, no. you know, things like that. We've talked about budget season. We've talked about the center itself. The center now is coming on, what did we say? 13 early? 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. As you look around, what are some of the physical things that might be needed sure. just to keep it up to par? Sure. I think um, the fitness room, since the fitness room is so utilized, I think just always maintaining the equipment, um, that's really important. And I know um, people use it and want to be able to use it. And if a machine is right. down, then, you know, that could set back, you know, someone's workout. Um, so really an upkeep of the fitness room and making sure that the equipment is is up to date and it's maintained and it's working. Um, if there's room to buy new equipment, you know, an extra bike or an extra, you know, some sort of weight machine, I think that would improve it even sure. better. Um, I think looking at our, uh, you know, ceilings and making sure the tiles are, you know, in place and always kind of monitoring that, the roof, um, carpet, floors, things like that, making sure those have a deep clean and those are replaced. Um, you know, the bathrooms always need a deep clean and to always get, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking Some at the upgrades, bathrooms. upgrades, I'm yeah. assuming, yeah. right? They, uh, they get a at lot the bathrooms. of use. Yeah, um, and also thinking too um, how we kind of continually to adapt ourselves and um, thinking of people with maybe uh, disabilities, low vision, hard of hearing. Th how can you sort of adapt the building to to meet the needs of those folks as well? Good point. Um, Good point. So we're always looking at, at those kinds of um, improvements. Uh, talking about the um, cafe area, coffee machine. Um, can you kind of turn it into like a, a you know we workplace or you know if if people yeah. are isolated and working from home and maybe they want to come to the center and use it as a space to kind of work or, um, yeah, you know, why not? You, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, we've just got have a little socialization. Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, maybe we'll get a little cafe or, or something um, and have pastries. And so, yeah, there's I lots of it. things that we can do with the building, um, but always kind of maintaining, uh, you know, the appearance of it and, and what needs to be kept up. Um, we have a great facilities team and, and they're always checking in on us. So um, the building right, is, is important. So. Um, what would you want, as we start to wrap this up a little sure. bit, what would you want people to know about the center, about the programs, about Council on Aging? Sure. What, what's sort of the takeaway? Sure. Um, we are always expanding, evolving. Um, what can we do better? Um, the feedback and, and from people and, and how is how we learn and what can we do to improve? Um, we really are looking at, you know, not just the now and the technology and things that we can do, um, kind of the future and where we're going to be and, and what that looks like in trying to reach a younger audience and younger seniors, um, diversify ourselves, more diversity, what can we do to do better um, in that way. Um, but the center is a welcoming place for all, and we want everybody to come in um, and have no barriers or, or anything that keeps people from coming into our into our center. Um, we, we want everybody to come. Um, we've got really great programs. Yeah, uh, we we have a really lovely group of people who come, really sweet staff. Um, I, we just want people to, to come and feel welcome um, and, and feel like they can give us feedback uh, about things that they're looking for too um, because we're always looking to do more. Uh, All right, always super. do better. And yes, uh, kudos to your staff and your volunteers, all of them. Anytime I've come and gone in that office, they're lovely. Okay. They're very supportive and helpful, so and always ready and willing to to answer any questions and help people. Okay. Okay. So people need to know that. Yeah. Well, Dana, this has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, this is Belmont Journal. My guest has been Beach Street Center Director Dana Bickelman, and um, thank you for thank being you. with us here today. And that was a ton of information, <laughs> and I hope people appreciate it and they come visit the Senior Center. I hope so. Okay. Thank Thanks. you.